pleasure to be here in this opening section of the seminar organized by Paul Ruspi and the European History Architecture Network. But at the same time, I also want to explain a little about my worries here. I think you know how difficult it is to say no to this young Miniatur, <laughs> even if it's, he's not here at the moment. But I must say that before I start, that I'm not an specialist in those fields. I'm not an architect, as Nat explained to all of you, and also I'm not exactly an art historian. So I hope I will not disappoint you in introducing myself in this way. I'm a social historian, an anthropologist, very much concerned with the uses of the images and ecology in general. I'm also accustomed to work with the idea that images are not products, but they produce realities, values, and customs. I know that that's a kind of common sense nowadays, and mainly here. But in my area, history and anthropology, that is not very much true. Historians are accustomed to be very serious about reaching documents, but not always when they deal with images. In a lot of books, important books, and essays, images can appear as faces, like faces reference of the context. That is why they are frequently considered like illustrations. And I'm using the word illustrations in the more traditional way, in the sense that they do not challenge the interpretations or even the context. I, my intention here is to take a completely different perspective. I'm going to use photographies as depictions as social representations of, the country, of this country. Uh, I could say the same about architecture. In the books I've read, or in the, book, the sort of book, history books, architecture can just appear as an example, a way to describe a previous situation. The idea and my main goal is to uh, contrast here the intentions, formal intentions of the photography with the receptions of the images, or even try to analyze some details, traces, signs presented in the documents when characters depicted in the photo do not correspond exactly to the formal intention of the photographer. Images can build realities, but also can challenge reality and societies. Uh, so, images are not just illustrations, as I said, of, of an evolutive process of modernization, but itself pieces of the fiction. I'm talking about the social constructions of public space, private spheres, the construction of, constructions of social spaces, also the constructions of history, the constructions of memories, and the construction of architecture as a way to tell a story, to tell a specific story. Uh, but also, I want to talk about agency. I think about here, but in my university, in my department, uh, anthropology, we are neighbors here. Agency is a word very important, <coughs> meaning that people can manipulate, can negotiate with very difficult situations. So I'm going to give you two examples. You don't have to see me, it's better if you see me. So I'm going to start just showing you two, two, giving you two examples, two important examples. Uh, I, this very well-known photograph here uh, was taken by Militão Augusto de Azevedo, a political photographer. Uh, we don't know the names of the people in this photograph, but I wanted, wanted to show you just one thing. You have here uh, an office, an atelier, as you know. It's a piece of architecture. You can see on the back how you have the trees, you have the palm trees, showing what? That the architecture here is a way to talk about the tropics. The tropics, the, the, the people that live in the tropics. Here you have the master in front. You can see that, that, that this is the master in front of us. He's white. He and also because he's wearing shoes. In Brazil, 
slaves could not shed, wear shoes, so that's why shoes became a very important symbolic element in our discursive sports speech and way of living. But the thing I want you to note, just to start, just to warm up, is why you have this, the, the master, very serious, very concentrated, very focused in his role in this picture, and then you have the slaves, each of them showing a different reaction. One of them acted as he had to act, is this one with a kind of black suit. The other one is really angry with the situation. The other one uh, moved, so his image is like trembling. The other one is like melancholic, you could say. So my idea is how we think about this kind of image. I do not have time to say. I could stay here talking and talking about this image. That's not my idea. It's just, to, as I said, to warm up, to think about photographies as depictions, as, as like building moments. Here you have two very important situations when you think about the, this kind of slave society that I'm going to talk a lot here. Uh, in Brazil, slavery was so natural. I think you know that Brazil was the last country to abolish slavery in the Occident. We abolished slavery uh, just in 1888 after Cuba and the United States. And uh, here you have two different and uh, two equal situations. It usually, slavery was so natural that uh, people would uh, sell a slave, rent a slave, put the mega instruments of a slave. It is a kind of convention. The uses of what we call cadeirinhas. So you have a kind of, we can say, a, a big chair, and you have two slaves that you carry a master in, uh, inside this this uh, this car. In this side, in the right side, you have Henschel, a uh, photographer from Pernambuco, that took a uh, master <coughs> in the streets. In this side, you have like a very artificial situation. Try to show it's not artificial, but it's a very artificial. You can see that it's an inside situation, and this one is an outside situation. In this situation, you have like all, all of them, the three of them, the four of them, acted as, a, as the convention wanted them to end. But in this situation, it's completely different. I remember when I saw this photograph in the exhibition we opened in Sao Paulo, that it's now open in Rio, that this is a very little photo. It's like it's a, a woman, it's not it's like very little, very delicate. But this situation acted with me like a ghost. I couldn't stop seeing this image. Not because of the lady in the center of the photograph. I think she's very nice, she's a big, a nice, she's a beauty. But look, the slave on the right side. He really didn't want to act. <laughs> and they wanted him to act. <laughs> you see how the pose, the body language, how he refuses to act as uh, they wanted them, they wanted him to act. So this is a kind of thing that I would like to talk with you today. Try to use photographs, not as illustration, but as social construct. Here I think there is a game, like a theater, a, rela a relation between the three of them that we have to talk about. But Luciano Migliaccio had asked me to talk around the exhibition I created together with Professor Boris Fosoy here at the uh, Communications Department, uh, an exhibition that just closed here in Sao Paulo. It was open at Instituto Economia, but it's a place that you must go. And now it's uh, in Rio in the CCBB, the Centro Cultural Banco do Brasil. In this exhibition, we had tried to analyze the history of Brazil from 1833 the moment that Ecole Florence introduced photography technique here in Brazil, to 2003, the first the moment when Lula, the first Lula government, to photographers. It's a large period of time, and some principles, some arguments, helped us to organize the sequence of the images. Of course, I have no time to show all of that, all of the documents, in the, show, in the show, and that it's not my main goal here. I just want to pick some important moments 
in the history of Brazil, when architecture, space, and urbanization were part of the same process of creating specific public images of the country. In so many years, how was the relationship between space and images in Brazilian society? How society uses to manipulate this kind of image? How architecture was shown together with the official image of the state? And why we have so many empty spaces? I'm going to talk about, with you about empty spaces and ask you about this. Why we have to show the spectacle of, of, of the, the urbanization as, as an empty spectacle? <coughs> Uh, but before I will start, this is time to talk about the title of this lecture. Uh, by the way, a suggestion again by Luciano Migliacci. The City of the Naked Man. The sentence was part of the irreverent spirit of Fabio de Carvalho, uh, a very well known modernist artist and performer. Uh, uh, that, and so this sentence, he created this, this sentence, and the sentence showed his spirit and also his political approach, his political projects together with that. The title is based on a masterpiece for a new city to be built in the tropics, which Carvalho created in the 30s. That is to say, 30 years before the official inauguration of Brazil. This project, imagine it as uh, this project of his, of him, imagine an ideal metropolis for uh, what ought to be the man of the future. A man without God, without property, without marriage. A new mankind that had stripped itself from its cultural constraints. Or in the in Carvalho words, without scholastic taboos, free for reasoning or, or, or thinking. The transgressive, erotic dimension of this project gives us one idea of the potential of this country, Brazil, always depicted by its beauty, immense, huge net nature, and on the other side, his very suspicious nature. So I want to start talking about these two, two sides of this, our official depiction. The, very sunny side of the nature, one side, and the other side, the shadow of the population, with very difficult customs. Let me start talking about nature. Since the beginning, uh, photography in Brazil, nature was a central argument, a central image to describe the country. This is the Edenic Brazil, the paradise. The good nature, always big, immense, huge. Uh, in this moment, they used to say that if we do not have, do not have cathedrals or, pa or, or palaces or even churches, old churches, we have the most beautiful nature, the most beautiful waterfall. And they would eventually say that a waterfall would correspond with a cathedral, for example. So, my point here is that architecture was, in this moment, had the same place of nature. So you can see this waterfall taken by, by Trump, for example. Uh, I don't know if you, can, if you can see a slave here. So the slaves were used like to give a scale. How big nature could be? Again, you have a slave. Can you see it? <laughs> so, the idea is not to see. <laughs> but I, I'm trying hard to make you see here how they would, how they, how they would use. Again, nature and nature at the same place. Thank you. Here you have the Botanic Gardens. The Botanic Gardens were created by Don Juan, Don Juan uh, the, the, the Portuguese. Emperor, Portuguese king that came to Brazil in the beginning of the 19th century, escaping from Napoleon. 
you can see again the idea that you have humanity just to give a scale, but you, nature is bigger than humanity. And the idea of the tropics and of nature was so big that even the emperor, Peter II, our most popular emperor, that was an emperor for more than 50 years, uh, he would represent himself officially in an office, in an atelier. He used to track the tropics to, uh, to bring the idea that we had at the same time the more uni a universal king, because he was a Bragança and a Bourbon, but also a very particular, a very exotic king, because in the tropics. Beautiful photograph by Marc Ferrez, showing slavery as a slave, a slave as a statue, an ebony statue, uh, without no life, but you can see the life in the baby that moved a little, so you can see you have life in the photograph. And he uh, has eventually would say that he wanted to put bananas in the basket, but that bananas would not give the equilibrium, so he selected like corns. <laughs> but the idea is to use corn as bananas. So again, the country of bananas. The other side, the indigenous people, native people. If you see this Albert, this fridge, Photograph, you can see how you have a construction here. You have the nature in the back, and the indigenous people, they are bigger than the photograph. So you can see how he worked with this photograph. Again, an idea of the, how, how natural our people were. Beautiful photograph by the place. Go back. Go. And this unbelievable photograph. So the Bororos were in the 19th century, Bororo were considered the most uh, terrible group, uh, the savages among the savages. They were the opposite side of the two peace. The indigenous peoples from the Romantic movement, they were very brave, very noble. So they just wanted to put the Bororos in a, in a studio together with very neoclassical elements, you can see the columns. And then he put some in cheese, he tried to put to, to put like uh, to put clothes on and some of them. So putting together this idea of nature and nature. Again, this idea of the universal natural uh, uh, girl or boy, I don't know. He tried he said I'm going to put a, like a tiger, you do not, you do not have tigers, but he wanted a tiger here in the tropics to give this idea of our nature. And this unbelievable uh, photograph of the Cassidia Via Tra, you know, uh, having on the back this very African, like, putting together America and Africa uh, with this kind of depiction that here you have like the savages living among us. So, I just wanted to, to, to show how the tropical nature invaded the official depiction of the country, transforming even in the first moments of the 19th century the idea of having uh, an architecture, having a format for the dance. But the other side, I said that I would, I would start talking about, the light, talking about the light and the shadow. The other side of the inside side of the photographs of world slave institutions. Uh, Brazil was one of the first countries to have photographers that would come to Brazil to depict this country that was, was considered a, like a laboratory of the races because we had all the races together. That was the form of image of the country in the 19th century. And also Brazil was the last one to abolish. So this gave us a very perverse situation. I'm working in the States and I know, and I, I know that some of you must know and can help me here, that Brazil has the most, the biggest archive of photographers on slavery and the most different situations. We are not very proud about it, but the thing is, we have really have thousands of images of slaves. I selected some of them in a very difficult <coughs> task here. 
just to show you the variations, the diversity of situations. This is a poster. No, Scarlett is a fan de visite. Uh, offered to foreigners to go out of the country. So you can see how the Henschel tried to recreate in his own atelier the idea of the trust, trust putting a big umbrella. Umbrellas always represented the, the sun of Brazil, the warm of Brazil, how you have to protect yourself against the sun. The idea of the fruits, the baskets, always the palm, always the palm trees on the back. Another very artificial situation. This is a pano da costa. It's a it's a, a slave pano from Guinea. Again, post again can't be visit and showing this very sexualized erotic image of the slaves in Brazil. Is a, is a group of images created by Christian Junior. Uh, Christian Junior would advertise those images in the newspapers of Sao Paulo, saying things like this, uh, a series of photographies of things that you can find in Brazil. A good thing to have with you when you leave the country and go, and go to, the, to other places. So you have, so he shows slaves in very different situations. And always a very perceived images of the slaves. Again, club with this beautiful image of the slave. And this we have like uh, I would say I would say a thousand of images of menace. I have here just three uh, to show this very ambivalent, very complex uh, situation that we really have. If you look to the left side, you can see a beautiful photograph of John Figueroa Villel. And you can see how tense at the same time you have a nice relationship with Mafia here. You can see the way the slaves look to the person, probably the masters are here. You can see the way he, she acts. And you can see also how the boy is close to her. Because if it was the photographer didn't want him to move, because he would, he would spoil the, the, the shot. But also because they really have a relationship. So those were the, I would say, the contradictions, the limits of this idea of a uh, relationship among a nanny and a Agassiz, uh, Augusto Stahl worked for Agassiz, a uh, Swiss scientist based in the United States in Harvard. Harvard has a big collection of this. Uh, this is really a series. Agassiz uh, hired Stahl to take these images. Then those are the scientific images they are using phrenology to show how you can prove in the body and in the brains the, the superiority or the inferiority of the population. This, uh, here you have an outside image, but it's like an inside image, because Lelsinger, he created everything. He put everything in the best place, in the best moment. So you have the nanny there with the sun, you have the slaves uh, playing here, or the slaves Working there at the Casa Grande, the big house. We're going to see other images of the big house, but this is one that's very, uh, it's very interesting. It's another image of Gilberto Freire. It's not a beautiful big house. Owner house is like a better than what? Let me have to talk about it. Again, this is going to a very relaxed slavery, how he has. That was really a very a propaganda of the state that we had a nice, a nice slave system against the slave system in the states and in other things. You cannot have a nice slave system if you think about <laughs> how you, you can have another person, so that how you can create it. So, but I, I want to start, really, I want really to start because I'm really from. Yes, yes. Talking about in a more direct way about the and the social and official state 
official station of the space in Brazil. In Latin America, and mainly in Brazil, the history of the cities and the history of urbanization were considered the main products of modernity in the West, a product of this machine that created and that generated modernity, a way to produce a social, political, and cultural modernity. But let us now think about those naked tropics put together to factor the idea of this lecture. Um, and what, what is now, in some particular moments, three moments, where architecture and liberalism have an important role to the creation of the same focus, the public image of the state. I'm talking here from an anthropological and sociological point of view, thinking about the social and cultural creation of spaces, symbolic space, official depictions of the country. Uh, uh, that's why I decided to select three important moments on the history of Brazil when architecture had a special place in our official discourse. The second line, uh, uh, the first republic and Brazil. Those first images, this first image, all those images came from uh, the, the moment of the Second Rhine, 1840 until 1889. The end of slavery was in 1888. Monarchy was so linked with slavery, slavery that one year uh, after it was the end of monarchy. And I want to start with this very important, very well-known photography uh, by Ferris, uh, the navy is slaves in a coffee plantation in the Valley of Valley of Paraíba region, and you can see the slaves here. And a kind of Casa Grande farm uh, house, owner's house on the back. But the spectacle is the first the first place, and you have the space positioning in very certain places, and here you have the... And here you have the fake door, probably a black, a former space pointing to the future. This is not the idea of Casa de Sensao, but it's again the idea, one of the ideas of Casa de Sensao, the idea of order, the idea of hierarchy that I want to talk a lot here. I want to show you just some images of this moment. Here you have a food with the Terador, Emperor Street in Petrópolis. You can see that you have no, no humanity. You could say that the, the, the technique would not allow to have a lot of people, but also I want to say that they really wanted to show the towns like this, empty towns. One of our four, first four photographies, the Chacalis de Mestre Valentim, in Rio de Janeiro. Here you have Salvador, you have some those here, that you can see. Mulok, white, showing again the Botanic Garden, on one of the places that you have a lot of photographs. Again, the idea of scale, but using white people now. And this is a general view of Petropolis. Petropolis was the <laughs> town of Pedro II, uh, created by Pedro II, that tried to, be, to, 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 to build the dream of the farm. The idea of creating a town in the middle of the, of the mountains, or the idea of the father, Pedro the First, but it was Pedro the Second that created this very neoclassical town with a Gothic church in the middle of the jungle. So the idea was to show how Brazil could be like not so warm, it could be like very fresh, how you could have very civilized customs. But again, the idea that architecture would give the people an official image of the state, a neoclassical state, a Gothic state, a very organized state, an empty state. At the end of the 
in line. We have some other photography showing a lot of people. The image is like, you have like a battle among the, the uh, political battle using images. So here you have uh, a document showing the end of the Paraguay War and it ended in the 70s. You can see on the back this beautiful building, like a monument, an empty monument, a monument that was created just for this occasion, a monument that would be destroyed two years after this occasion. And the crowd, a new idea of the crowd. Here you have a very important document uh, by the most popular, one of the most popular moments of the month. A very paradoxical moment because we I'm talking about the moment of the voting law, the moment when we had the abolition of the slavery industry. So I want you to contrast contrast this image, for example, with this image. So this is considered the last image of the month. We have two. One uh, one, this is one, and the other one is the same one, but they are wearing hats. So I forgot to put it because it's very funny and very ideological in a sense. So can you imagine that this is the last image of the monarch? Don Pedro the second is here, Isabel is here, this is the Don Pedro, this is the Felipe de China, the wife, and this is like it. At, at that moment, Don Pedro the second he knew that he was not any longer a king. He was going to live to, to Rio de Janeiro. He thought he would be, the, the history would not be like this, that he would continue like a king. But you can see how ideological is this image, how empty the stars, the stairs, sorry. the idea that you have a power, that you have a power that knows very well how to, how to act in this situation. But uh, history would be different. I have no time to talk about this, but the idea is to show now how we, that was the moment of our first republic, that it's a moment that we are studying a lot, we historians, we are studying a lot now, because this moment that uh, uh, the beginning is in 1889 and goes until 1930 uh, was called for a long time like the Old Republic. Now we know that the, this name, this title, Old Republic, was created by Getulio Vargas, this very populist president that wanted to show that his government was the new one. So that the, the one that came before was the old one. Also, he wanted to show that he was the one that would give us modernity, modernization, urbanization, that new laws, new citizen, new process of citizenship. And now we know that the First Republic was a very important moment, a moment of inclusion and exclusion. Also was a moment that I think all, most of you know, that it was a very important uh, moment in the history of the architecture and urbanization because of the process of Pereira Passo before, you know, uh, the Pereira Passo's model of urbanization. We have a lot of photographs about this process of creating Rio de Janeiro as a new capital. The old image, the, the, the image of the capital of the monarchy. Now we needed a capital, a new a capital for the republic. So we can see the image of destruction. Again, not a lot of people. Image of the new bourgeoisie that, that would act, have in Brazil, act and live in Brazil as they were in Paris. Image of Rio de Janeiro, the Rua do Obidor, the, the Obidor Street, the more elegant street in the, in the, in the capital, in the former capital. Image coming from São Paulo, from Gunsley, the idea that modernization, modernization would include us, would make us the same. Image, again, Gunsley showing the Estação da Luz, the, the, and I hope you will see it, you have time to see it here in São Paulo. Malta, again, in Rio de Janeiro, more showing the Central Avenue. You can see how we were like a, a, bullet, a French boulevard, a Tasmanian boulevard. And this is the idea that we want to show up to the, 
to the foreigners, you know? Here, a beautiful image of the exhibi national exhibition in the beginning of the 10th century, when Brazil wanted to show not just the nature, but the industrialization, and you can see how they build that very those very magnificent palaces. And this unbelievable photograph that was taken in 22, when we had our centenary of independence, looks like Blade Runner in the trunk or something like this. <laughs> But again, the, the situation, oh, and then I, 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 I wanted to, to bring to you some image of the posters. Posters were, were a kind of fever in the beginning of the century in Brazil. And the idea of this, those postcards that you have from whole countries, a big country and a very different country, is that, that again, the idea that modernity would, would, would make the same. So, it would be no difference among us. So here you have the city, and then Sao Paulo, the municipal theater, and then Belo Horizonte, that was the capital of Minas Gerais that was created in the turning of the century. It's unbelievable. They, they said, we are going to have the lights for the first year, with the first moment of the first century. Here you have Maceió. All the same, see, and Ceará, different but the same, and the lake in the north of the country, and Paraíba do Norte. Uh, as time goes fast here, I, I, ha I just uh, want to say that uh, this is just one side of the, of those images, the same photographers would show Another side of the organization, here you have Gutierrez showing the market of Pierre So here you have the population. Uh, Malta, the same one that saw a few Janeiro like a Rosmanian Boulevard, showing another corner of Pierre Janeiro, a slam in the Senate Street. And Gunsley, the same one that show it how progressive we were uh, building railroads, how difficult railroads could be. This is a beautiful photograph because you can, uh, you can uh, try to see each of the expressions here. They, they cannot understand what's happening here. And you can see that the, the lines are not, well, they are not so straight. They are very difficult to understand. This beautiful photo that I might say is very dangerous. <laughs> you can see that uh, going to the top of Bali was not a very easy task. And the other side of the other side, that was the moment of the exclusion, the moment of the uh, This You have here wife and kids. We know that they are, they, they are going to be killed 10 minutes after the show. Here you have the vaccine revolution. So another uh, sort of pattern here is the phenomenon of urbanization. It's on the left side, and then you have people talking about this problems of urbanization. And then the Madeira Mamoré, where you wrote uh, the idea that we could control nature, that uh, the process of modernization would be a process that would go the direction of the forest, and that was not reality. I think I talked a lot here. <laughs> Do I have 10 more minutes? It's okay. I don't want to. Other faces, other images of this first republic. So we here started taking photographs, not just formal slaves, but also about the images. Beautiful shot. Here you have, not say because it's we are in 1899, you can see that we are not wearing shoes. And a story, a very nice, very important photographer that came to Sao Paulo and tried to, to take some images from the Italian immigration, mainly the Italian immigration, in Sao Paulo. Now, in this place. So this is a good image of how we create this idea of modernity without modernization, and also, I don't know, I'm going to explain myself very well, how you have, at, 
a very empty idea of, of urbanization at the same time that urbanization we have to deal with those moments with this idea of nature. Because the whole you know, uh, he called this whole about like the set of misery and Jonathan Abelis that uh, wanted to deal with this image. But it's a you know, you know, together with the plant. Those are some of the contradictions of this moment, the idea that you have this big contrast. That, that was the idea of the exhibition also, how we, Brazil was, is a place of focus, how Brazil is a place that you have everything together, you know, and how we can deal with this idea of putting everything together. I'm not going to uh, teach you, teach the trees how to talk about <laughs> the, the, I'm not, I'm not foolish here. So when she never said to me, yes, you have to do it. I'm not going to do it. I was just going to finish showing some images about Brasilia. But you know very well that Brasilia was uh, created to be the capital of Brazil, the capital in the middle of nowhere in the 60s an icon of the modernization, the idea that we could break with the, the desert, that we could create, definitely create a rational space without people, maybe without people, better without people, in the middle of the, uh, not now, but at that moment. Uh, the first name was Vera Cruz, I know, I think you know, and then they changed it because they thought it was like two religions, but, but they created Brasilia in the day of the birth that was uh, a hero created by the First Republic, and also at the day of the creation of Rome. So that tells a lot. Yuri Gagarin, when he went to, to Brasilia in 61st, I think you know, he said, I had the impression that I am disembarking in another planet. So the idea of being in another planet the idea of being in a, in a town without past, in a town without history, in a town without space, is very strong when you go to, to, to Brazil. Uh, here you have Jonazol. Uh, I'm just going to talk about Jonazol, all the rest you know. Mm -hmm. So he would take photographs like about the, our racial uh, miscegenation, about our, our good relationship with indigenous people, about coffee, putting the flag of Brazil on the back. Okay, all like the ones. And then this is a beautiful photograph. This one I really like. So it's like how you use formats to put together the model and the Again? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> because I don't have to stop now. <laughs> uh, this very well known photography of Flick, that's, that's from Paul. That's from this, uh, yeah, how vertical our capitals are starting to be. Flick again, so it's very naked now. Make another, make another idea of this. Make and then this is the, the, the image that we selected to, to, to do the cover of our book because, again, this is uh, uh, Thomas Farkas' uh, document and he wanted to show pe how people reacted to this new uh, metropolis, to this new capital. So you can see how they are trying to understand what's going on here. <laughs> so I want to end. And uh, I just said that as was, uh, we are, I'm teaching a, a, a person in Princeton about what we call frontiers. You know? So we are putting together, it's, this is a graduate, uh, this is for graduate students, so they can read Portuguese and Spanish. So they are reading Guimarães Rosa, some passages from Guimarães Rosa. Euclides da Cunha, the writings from the Amazon, when he, when he talks about the land without history. And they are reading Mário Jandar, uh, the Turista Accidental, Accidental, to, uh, for this. Huh? 